Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkman Homestead. My name is Krista and I'm finally getting back to some canning projects. I've kind of taken a couple weeks off because we were really, really busy with some car shows. My husband, Stephen, works in the car industry and he has actually been putting on, the company he works for has been putting on some really big car shows in our area and we have a week off. So I decided to get into the kitchen and get a little bit of canning projects done. And I thought I would turn the camera on and take you guys along with me because to be honest, I have been doing a lot of canning projects, but I have just been kind of turning the camera on and just silently just getting them done. So what this video is going to be is we're gonna do maybe a couple projects together. I actually pre-recorded making a teriyaki sauce Rotel, which is like a tomato pepper, um, almost like diced tomatoes, but with like spices in them. And then I also made some sun-dried tomatoes and I made them with the recipes that you guys actually recommended and they turned out so amazing. I wanna show you what they look like. So I made three little half pint jars and this is what they look like. It's not really focusing very well here. Sorry, my kitchen's kind of dark. Think it'll focus the recipe actually recommended letting them wait a couple of weeks so i made them probably now it's been a couple of weeks according to your guys' suggestion i actually used avocado oil because i didn't have any olive oil so i made mine with avocado oil which is really really cool so according to that if as long as they're submerged these will last quite a bit of time in my pantry so i am wanting to actually make a pasta dish with these because i'm super excited to try them after last video when i was attempting to make that sweet chili sauce which Based on what you guys have said in the comments, it is actually supposed to be like a fancy ketchup or like a sweeter sauce. I didn't know that. I kind of went into it anticipating that it was gonna be something completely different. I'm glad with what it turned out to be, but thank you guys so much for your comments because I thought I was doing something completely wrong, but I guess the original poster of that recipe, it was exactly how it should have been. I just was thinking that it was something else. So based on that, today what we are going to can is a Asian version of a sweet chili sauce. This is a sauce that we actually like to marinate chicken in and I like to like dip certain Asian meals in it. So I thought we would get some made up. I may actually be making a recipe tonight, a chicken recipe that I am going to be using this Asian sauce in. But if I do make it, that recipe will actually be on this Saturday's kind of what we eat in a week video, which by the way, this week I have some really good recipes that I've been making. Last night's meal was insanely delicious. It was so, so incredible. I loved it so much and I was so happy that I turned the camera on to share it with you guys. But again, that is Saturday's video. So just to give you a little suspense there. This looks like a pretty straightforward recipe. It actually looks pretty easy. And this one, just reading here. So this one is a water bath canning recipe which I love because I find that water bath canning for me just is really, really simple and it goes really quickly. So these ones are water bath canner for 10 minutes. So it should be pretty good. And this recipe, like I said before, it looks like it is pretty simple. We're gonna can them in half pint jars today because that's what the recipe recommends. The other fun thing that we may, hopefully fingers crossed, we get to it today because I really want to because I don't want them to go bad. So yesterday I was at Walmart and I picked these up. These are just a little four ounce jar of mushroom pieces and stems. I picked them up because I really like having mushrooms on hand. I love mushrooms and I love incorporating mushrooms in a lot of my meals. These were $1.50 each for these small little containers. If I wanted just the mushroom pieces, those were a dollar or those were 250 each. So I decided to pick up a couple of these mushrooms. This is 16 ounces of mushrooms. So I picked up two of these packages. I want to try to can mushrooms myself. I sometimes find mushrooms like on sale, sometimes for like marked down. Sometimes I can get a big one marked down for 99 cents. This was 348 I believe or 248 I can't remember how much it was I was trying to do the math based on like this versus this 
I don't know if it's necessarily in this situation because I paid full price for these mushrooms. I don't know if it's going to necessarily save me money. I am just 100% canning these because I need to have the convenience of not having to run out to the store if I need to add mushrooms to something. I really would like to have them canned and on my shelf because I really love to use them in my cooking. So if we get time, we are gonna can up some mushrooms because it is canning safe. I believe the Ball Blue Book has a recipe for it. I believe this cookbook actually has a recipe in here. I'm just gonna double check. Thought I remember seeing it somewhere. So it says cultivated mushrooms. It is in this cookbook on page 392. Um, it is a pressure canning recipe, so that's why I said if we have time, we'll get to it. It says do not can wild mushrooms. So these are definitely not wild mushrooms. These are just a regular white whole mushroom. This would be good too if you forage for your mushrooms. I have heard that in the state of Kentucky, there is a lot of really good mushrooms that you can actually forage. I don't know anything about it, but that is actually something that I'm really, really interested in learning about. And I know that our extension office actually has a course that you can go and take to kind of learn how to forage mushrooms in your area. So I may end up taking that course because I'm really, really interested in doing that. And I have heard that Kentucky has some really good wild mushrooms. So Maybe doing that in the future but that's not happening right now because we're still trying to catch up on preserving this year's harvest so again if we have time we'll get to this I'm either gonna do it today or tomorrow I also have a fridge full of apples that I have to get to I'm probably gonna end up just doing like an apple pie filling I don't think I'm gonna record it with you guys though because to be honest, there are so many YouTube videos out there of people canning apple pie filling and applesauce. I just, I like to show you guys interesting, fun, new things. And I don't really think, I mean, apple pie filling is definitely fun, but like I said, there's so many videos on it and I really like to show you guys new stuff. So I'm just talking a lot. So let's get started on making this Asian sweet sauce and hopefully we can use that tonight in a recipe. So I have my water bath canner here. I put eight little half pint jars in this water bath canner. I turned it up so I'm heating the jars up just so that they are going to be hot because we are gonna be putting a hot sauce into them so I need to have those jars hot. Plus I wanna get that water heated up as well. So we're just gonna let that do its thing for a couple of minutes while it gets warm. You guys, I had some friends staying with us the last couple of weeks and I showed one of them my pantry and she just looks at it and she says, it is so mind blowing that you do all of this. And she's like, you really don't have to go to the grocery store. And it is so true. She told me that she was so intimidated to even begin where to begin to start doing this. I said, YouTube. <laughs> I said, that is how I got started learning how to can. It really took the intimidation out of the whole canning process because I was seeing other people doing it and I was seeing them kind of not necessarily make it easy, but I was seeing them doing it and it really, really helped. And I told her, just get started, watch a couple videos on it, just try something that you feel is super easy and not only that but try something that you buy at the grocery store that you're wanting to reduce one thing that i do is i look at what i buy consistently from the grocery store bananas are one of them i buy bananas every week from the grocery store because that's what i have for breakfast usually that is not something i can grow in my area and to have a fresh banana, I can't necessarily preserve that. So I can't eliminate the grocery store there. But like with things like mushrooms, I can definitely buy my mushrooms in bulk and can them. And then I'm not going to the grocery store like once a week to buy mushrooms. So I am trying to eliminate the need for me to be going to the grocery store weekly. I really want to make my grocery trips almost like just a monthly thing where I just go once a month. I order from Azure for the majority of my stuff, but in my other stuff, I really just kind of want to do it once a month because I not only will it save me money not going to the grocery store because definitely I end up picking up things that I don't need when I'm at the grocery store. And then I spend so much more money. 
So this is one of my goals that I'm setting for myself this year is at least with the condiments, I'm not going to be buying any more condiments from the grocery store. So it is just strictly me canning my own. And if I can't find a canning recipe, then I will make it on my own. For example, like my cream of mushroom soup. I have not found a canning safe recipe for that yet. But that comes together within a matter of like minutes right before I need to have it. So I've kind of eliminated that. All right, so let's get started with this sauce. This is um, like I can feel that it's a little bit hot. So we're going to get started on making this sauce. I'm going to bring you guys down so you can see what I'm adding to the pot. Okay, so I have a large heavy bottom saucepan here on the stove top. And I am going to turn it to a medium high heat. And I'm going to add two cups of filtered water. I'm going to add two cups of rice wine vinegar. Should put this a little bit under. I actually did not mean rice wine vinegar. I just meant rice vinegar. I actually buy my rice vinegar in bulk because I go through a lot of it. I picked this up at a. Um, it was like an Asian market in Nashville. It's a really, really big grocery store, and it's kind of all. Um, Asian stuff in there and I love it and I don't think I paid very much for this so I buy mine in bulk because again I go through a lot of it because I love Asian dishes so I make a lot of stuff with them but definitely you can find these at any grocery store they're usually come in a smaller container they usually come in a small version like this I think this is 12 ounces so what I do is when this gets low I just top it up with this stuff Again, buy everything in bulk so I don't have to go to the grocery store. <laughs> We're gonna add two cups of a organic evaporated cane juice or just white sugar, whatever you have. We're gonna add four teaspoons of salt. I'm just using a Redmond's Real Salt in this. Strictly with this. You know what, I gotta turn this off the heat for a minute realized I did not chop up my peppers yet. The recipe calls for four fresh red Fresno, red serrano, or red jalapeno peppers, stems removed and minced, but not to remove the seeds. I don't have any of those peppers, but I do have some cayenne peppers. So we are going to use cayenne peppers in this. It might be a mistake using these because this might be like an insane level of heat, but that's okay, we're gonna use what we have, so it's okay. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get these chopped up. I probably should be wearing gloves to do this, but hopefully I don't burn my hand. It's weird, I planted cayenne peppers and the exact same seeds. One of the cayenne peppers turned out like this and the other turned out like this. Exactly the same seeds, just two different plants but they turned out really, really different. All of the cayenne peppers on this particular plant that look like this are all really, really big. And all the cayenne peppers on this one are really skinny and long, so it's really weird how the exact same seed packet is giving me two very different peppers. Okay, I just quickly rinsed them off. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna remove the stems. Probably could get away with using my chopper on this. You know what, we might do that. I'm not trying to burn my hands today, so we are gonna use this chopper. Our chilies all chopped up. Add them in here. I actually ended up putting one more chili pepper in because they were smaller peppers and I think that the original recipe calls for like a bigger pepper. So <laughs> it's definitely, it smells hot. It's in my throat. It calls for six large garlic cloves minced. So I'm just going to put, this is what I'm gonna use. I don't have fresh garlic. I really wish I did. This is definitely something I love using is this pre-mint stuff. So we're gonna put in maybe like two and a half teaspoons of it. Turn the heat back on. So it says to stir to dissolve the sugars and the salt and bring the mixture to a boil and then we gotta boil it for five minutes. While that sauce is boiling, we need to take some clear gel and we need to actually mix 
um, a quarter cup plus three tablespoons of clear gel with one third cup of water. Right, so it's to a boil now, so we're gonna boil this for five minutes. I did a little taste test on it and it is really, really good. I'm really excited about it. I'm gonna turn down the heat just to touch on that. While that's boiling, we are going to make up the clear gel solution. So I have one third cup of water here. I'm gonna add one fourth cup of clear gel plus three teaspoons. I think it was three and not two. Double check. Yeah, three teaspoons. It says if you don't have clear gel, you can use Thermaflow as well or any other canning safe starch. We're gonna whisk this together. Sometimes I did not set my timer for five minutes. Sure, soft the edges. It's been five minutes now. So we're gonna take this clear gel mixture and we are going to quickly whisk it into this other mixture. Okay, so we have to bring this back to a boil and then we have to lower the heat to low and cook it for one minute. Get it off the heat. We are going to leave a quarter inch of head space. We're just gonna ladle it in here. I'm feeling I really should have doubled this recipe because this tastes really, really good. We got five half pints. I'm thinking I might come back and make another batch because this tastes delicious. Quickly debubble it. Look at how gorgeous that looks. I don't know if it's picking it up or not. So this is really sticky. We're gonna clean these tops with some vinegar so that we don't have any sticky stuff interfering with a good seal. This is making my like OCD-ness crazy with the silver band and gold lid, but I don't store mine with the bands or with these um, rings on, so it's okay. If I stored them like this, this would be a no-go. I like everything to match. This water is now hot, so we are going to add these jars in. These are gonna go in here for 10 minutes. This recipe really, 20 minutes and this recipe is done. That is quick canning. That is what I love. I can't even get to the grocery store in that time, so that is such a win-win. What I think I'm gonna do, because I've said it a couple times already, I've tasted it and that is so delicious, I think I'm actually going to whip up another really quick batch so that I can get another five can, because if I can get that can, that'll last me about a year and that's perfect. The recipe does state that, where are my glasses? The recipe does state to store these in a cool, dark place for up to one year. After they are open, it is good for three weeks in the refrigerator. So if I make 10 of them, that'll be good for a year for me. So I think that's what we'll do. I'm gonna quickly whip up another batch. There is a little tiny bit left over. These are jars are so cute. These are like it's a three ounce jar. It is so cute. So what I'm gonna do, this little leftover, I'm just gonna put this in my fridge because obviously I can't can that. So while I am getting that second batch done and those ones are in the canner, I am going to include those other video clips that I filmed for you guys in advance. So the first one I believe is going to be the teriyaki sauce. Maybe it might be the I don't know. I don't know which order they're gonna be in. One of them is gonna be the sun-dried tomatoes, one is gonna be the Rotel, and then the other last one is going to be the teriyaki sauce. That teriyaki sauce is a staple. I go through that so quickly. 
it is my favorite for making like a beef jerky with it. I marinate that beef jerky in that teriyaki sauce for at least 24 hours and then I dehydrate it. It is so, so delicious. So I'll include those videos in here while I'm getting that second batch up and then I'll be back with you guys once those are coming out of the canner. So it looks like the very first recipe is the sun-dried tomatoes. So what I'm doing right now is just cutting up some Arkansas Traveler tomatoes. These tomatoes did not grow very big for me, so I thought they were gonna be perfect for this recipe. The original video that I watched, she actually used a Roma tomato and she just sliced them in half. So you want a pretty thick slice. Once you get them all sliced up and put onto your dehydrator trays, you are going to put a lot of salt on top of them. It helps bring the moisture out of them and plus it just seasons the tomato then you are going to put it into your dehydrator I believe I had my dehydrator set at 128 and these guys took four days to get completely crunchy you do not want any bend to them you want them to be completely dried out once you are done with the dehydration you are going to take them out and to a stock pot you're gonna boil two quarts of water with one cup of vinegar you're gonna add the tomatoes into that and then you are going to boil them for two minutes. Once they are done boiling, you are going to take them out and you are going to lay them in a single layer on a dish towel and you are going to let them almost dry completely again. You still want a little bit of bend to them. It's really weird that you <laughs> dehydrate them, rehydrate them, and then dry them again. But that's just what the recipe said and this recipe turned out great. So then to a small bowl, what I'm doing is I am adding one teaspoon of basil, one teaspoon of thyme, one teaspoon of oregano, and one teaspoon of minced garlic. I'm gonna get that all mixed together. I forgot to add, I was also heating up my oil. I used an avocado oil for this and you wanna just lightly heat it. You don't wanna boil the oil, you just want it to be slightly warm. She does suggest that because she says it helps the herbs to stick to the tomatoes a little bit better. So you want it to heat the oil to about 100 degrees. So in each jar you are going to use approximately half a cup of oil and you've seen there I am using half pint jars. That's what I found best for this because I'm not going to be using a whole bunch of the tomatoes all at once and once you do kind of open up that jar you kind of want to use it pretty quickly after opening it up. So you're going to kind of make like a lasagna with the herbs and the tomatoes. You're just going to layer a couple tomatoes, layer some herbs. Once you get that all done, you are going to add your oil in and then you're just going to make sure you debubble around all of the sides. That way you have your tomatoes completely submerged. So you're releasing all of the air bubbles. The tomatoes need to be completely submerged at all times in order for this to be shelf stable. And she does suggest that you can, it, it should be good for approximately six months. Um, but again, I will leave that link for you guys. The next recipe we are going to make, it looks like it is the teriyaki sauce. So what I'm doing in a small bowl is I am grating up some fresh ginger. Now I ended up doubling this recipe, but I will give you guys the single measurement. So you want to have four tablespoons of freshly grated ginger, or you could chop it finely. And then to a large stock pot, you're going to add two cups of soy sauce, two cups of light brown sugar, one cup of white vinegar, two tablespoons of bottled lemon juice you can use lime juice also and then you're gonna add that ginger into that pot you're gonna get it all whisked up and then you're going to bring it to a boil over medium high heat and then once it comes to a boil you're gonna lower the heat and simmer it for 20 minutes the last two minutes you're going to remove it from the heat and you're gonna actually take two tablespoons of that mixture and you are going to mix that in with two tablespoons of clear gel you're just going to whisk it until it becomes almost a paste and then you're going to take that mixture and then you are going to whisk it back into the teriyaki sauce. I'm going to be canning these in half pints. I've just found that that's the size that works best for whenever I need it for a meal. So in the background there I have my water bath canner going and I had the jars in there so I was heating the jars up because I'm going to be putting the hot sauce into them. I need the jars to be hot and I also need the water to be hot. So I'm going to ladle it all into the jars. We're going to leave a quarter inch headspace on the jars. You want to make sure that you're also wiping the rims really well because this is a very, very sticky sauce. 
and you want to clean the rims with a little bit of vinegar then you're going to add your lids on and your rings fingertip tight and then these are going to go into the water bath canner making sure that there is one to two inches of water above the jars and then we are going to water bath can these for 15 minutes after 15 minutes we're going to turn the heat off remove the lid and let the jars just sit in that um, water bath canner for five minutes and then remove the jars and let them sit at room temperature for 12 to 24 hours just a couple of notes that I wanted to add on here. With the soy sauce, I actually did not use soy sauce. I used a combination of a liquid aminos and coconut aminos. I think that the coconut aminos is gonna change the taste a little bit. I would recommend using liquid aminos or soy sauce. Those are the two that I've used in the past and they've turned out great. There they are all finished recipe is the Rotel. Now I think I found this recipe on either Instagram or Facebook so I honestly I do not know if it is a tested recipe so please do your own research when making this recipe if you like it. Now I did double the recipe but the measurements I'm going to give you are all the single recipe. In this recipe I should have used what it called for. It called for plum or paste tomatoes cord and it was three pounds. I used my slicer tomatoes because that's all I had available and you see there that's why I'm scooping it out because of all that liquid. This recipe ended up turning to more of like a spiced tomato sauce than an actual Rotel. I would definitely definitely advise using a paste tomato in this because then you won't have it as runny. So I have three quarters pound of jalapenos or just kind of a mix of peppers there Popped up and then I'm adding equal four cloves of garlic I just added a couple of teaspoons of my mint stuff two teaspoons of salt and then a quarter cup of chopped fresh cilantro I didn't have enough cilantro so I just kind of used what I had and then you are going to add one and a half teaspoons of a citric acid a quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika a quarter teaspoon of coriander a quarter teaspoon of cumin and a quarter teaspoon if you have it of Mexican oregano I did not have Mexican and oregano and when I don't have it I actually use tarragon in its place they are very very similar as far as the flavor profile so what you want to do is just heat all of these ingredients together and once it is hot you are going to ladle these into pint size jars that's what I'm just using in this case I believe you could probably even do it for quarts but I don't know what the time would be you're gonna leave half inch headspace on these jars and then you're gonna remove all of the air bubbles you're going to clean the rims pretty good because again this is a pretty sticky thing and then you're going to put your lids on rings fingertip tight and you're going to process these in a water bath canner for 20 minutes then you're going to remove the lid take it off the heat let the jars just sit in there for another five minutes and then remove the jars and let them cool on a towel or counter any place for at least 12 to 24 hours then you just want to clean them and remove the rings and put them on your shelf these are some diced tomatoes that I'd actually can that day. I didn't film it because it was just a plain diced tomato that I was doing, but I have been getting so many tomato products canned and it is so great. So there they are and let's get back to that delicious Asian sweet chili sauce. So we got all of the chili sauce canned up. I doubled it because it was really good. So as you've seen, we are not canning mushrooms. I am dehydrating mushrooms. I don't actually have enough to do a full pressure canner load full. Unfortunately, the two pounds of mushrooms just is not going to result in a lot of them. So my other option that I have that I really, 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 really do love to do when I do find mushrooms on sale, but I have a lot of them right now, um, is I like to dehydrate them. Let me just get this in here. The lid put on this. I have this sitting, I believe it's 128. Um, and then I am going to come and check them before I go to bed tonight. That's what I have it sitting on right now. 
I really enjoy dehydrated mushrooms. They are super, super versatile. I actually like powdering them up. When I make my homemade cream of mushroom soup, I can actually just add the mushroom powder to that and it adds that mushroom flavor. I can even just add the dehydrated mushrooms. And I really like to use them in meals because as soon as you add them to the liquid that you're cooking, so like if you're cooking something that has like an excess amount of chicken broth or beef broth in it, you just add the mushrooms and they just come right back to life. So we're gonna do that instead of canning it. It still makes them shelf stable. I still don't need to run out and necessarily buy them from the store. I'm going to be on the lookout though to see if I can find any on sale because I really do want to get some canned. So that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope I gave you guys some ideas of some really cool condiments to can up. Like I said, that teriyaki sauce is really, really good. It is so delicious to make a beef jerky with and this chili sauce that we just made up winner, winner of a recipe. I will leave everything linked for you below. If I don't have a linkable recipe for you, then I will just type out the steps that I followed in order to do that. That sun-dried tomato recipe that I followed, if I can find the video that I watched, because it was a YouTube video that one of you guys actually recommended, if I can find it, I will leave it linked in the comments below. I believe that it is already actually linked in one of my videos in the comment section because that's how I was able to view it. Somebody linked it for me, but I will find it and try to relink it for you guys. So I hope you guys again enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great day or night whenever you're watching this and I will see you on the next video. Bye guys.